How are you, my learner? Welcome to Darasa, where learning is made easy. You are teacher of physics today is Purity and Zelimo. And our topic today is pressure. We'll continue with pressure in solids. And I would like us to do a review of what we covered during the previous session. We looked at the definition of pressure and we seen that pressure is the force acting normally per unit area. Pressure is the force acting normally per unit area. And we looked at two factors that affect pressure in solids. And the first factor is the amount of force applied and number two, the area of contact. Now, during this lesson, we are going to look at calculations of pressure. We'll be able to calculate pressure, force, or even area, depending with the question that we have been given. Now, I would like you to consider this definition that we've looked at. We've seen that pressure is equal to force divided by area. And we say that the force should be in its SI unit, that is newtons, and therefore pressure is equal to force in newtons divided by area in square meters. Now if you look at this triangle, you can see clearly that when you want to get pressure, you can draw this triangle whereby pressure will be given by force divided by the area because we have the horizontal line representing division and the vertical one representing multiplication. So therefore we have pressure being equal to force divided by area. If you want to calculate the force, force will be given by pressure multiplied by area. And again, if you want to calculate area, will be given by force divided by pressure. Now, I want us to go into a question and calculate the quantity that we have been asked. Now, the question reads that a force of 100 newtons is applied to an area of 100 square millimeters. A force of 100 newtons is applied to an area of 100 millimeters square or square millimeters. Determine the pressure exerted on the area. Determine the pressure exerted on that area in newtons per square meters. Now, in this question, we are asked to calculate the pressure in its SI units, that is newtons per square meters. Now, the first thing, whenever you are given such a numerical question, you need to analyze the question. What quantities have we been given? Now, in this question, you've been given the force, and the force is 100 newtons. You've also been given the area, that is 100 square millimeters, and you are told to calculate the pressure. So it is the pressure that is in question. Now, to get pressure, we come back to this triangle where we can see that pressure will be given by force in newtons divided by the cross-section area or the area of contact in square meters. Now, we already have the force in newtons, which is 100 newtons, but we have the area, but in square millimeters. And therefore, we need to change the square millimeters into square meters. Now, how are we going to change the square millimeters into square meters? Now, we need to ask ourselves, how many square millimeters make one square meter? One million square millimeters make one square meter. Now, what about a hundred square millimeters? We need to cross multiply and we end up getting 100 times 1 divided by million, which will be equal to 0 0.001 square meters. 0 0.001 square meters. And therefore, we can now go ahead and calculate the pressure. Now, the pressure, therefore, will now be equal to force in newtons, that is 100 newtons divided by the area in square meters, which is 0 0.001 square meters. And if you calculate that using your calculator, you end up getting your pressure as 1 million newtons per square meters. 1 million newtons per square meters. 
and that is the pressure that will be exerted on that area. Clear? Now, we need to move on to the next question. We still calculate the quantity asked. Now, we are told that the total weight, the total weight of a car with passengers, the total weight of a car together with the passengers is 25,000 newtons. The total weight of a car together with the passengers is 25,000 newtons. Then we are given that the area of contact, the area of contact of each of the four tires, the area of contact of each of the four tires uh, with the ground is 0 0.025 meter square or 0 0.025 square meters. Now the question reads, determine the car tire pressure. Determine the minimum car tire pressure. Now we want to calculate the pressure exerted by this car together with the passengers. We are told that the weight of the passengers plus the car is 25,000 newtons. So we have been given the weight which is the same as the force. So the force in this case is 25,000 newtons. Then we have been told that the area of one tire, the area in contact with the ground of one tire is 0 0.025 square meters. And remember this car has four tires. So we are asked to calculate the minimum pressure that is going to exert on the ground. Now in this case again, we remember that we have been given the force 25,000 newtons We've also been given the area of one tire as 0 0.025 square meters. Now we need to get the total area that will be covered or that the, will be in contact with the ground. And now that we have four tires, we'll take the area of one tire, we multiply by four to get the total area of contact with the ground. And when you take 0 0.025 square meters, you multiply by 4, you end up getting 0 0.1 square meters. And that is the area that we are going to use to calculate the pressure or the minimum pressure that will be exerted by this car on the ground. Now, pressure is given by force all over area. Our force is 25,000 newtons. And our area for the four tires is 0 0.1 square meters. So we have 25,000 newtons divided by 0 0.1 square meters. And you end up getting 250,000 newtons per square meters. Now that gives us our pressure. The pressure that is being exerted on the ground by the car together with the passengers and the weight given as 25,000 newtons. So the pressure exerted is 250,000 newtons per square meters. Now, that's very simple. Now, let's move on to our third question. We have been given that the cross-section area of a piston is 24 square centimeters. That is the area that we have been given for the piston, 24 square centimeters. Given that the pressure exerted is 5 newtons per square centimeters, here we have been given our pressure in newtons per square centimeters. And again, the cross-section area we've been given in square centimeters. So we have been told to determine the force applied. The force applied. Again, we go back to our triangle whereby we can see clearly that pressure is being given by force divided by area. And if we want to calculate now, in this question, we are told to calculate the force applied. And we have been given the pressure. We have the pressure as 5 newtons per square centimeters. And we also have the cross-section area as 24 square centimeters. And therefore, we can see clearly here that force will be the product of pressure and area. So force will be equal to pressure 
multiplied by the cross section area and our pressure is 5 newtons per square centimeters now that per square centimeters you can see how we can write it as newton divided by square centimeters multiplied by multiplied by we want to multiply by the cross section area which is 24 square centimeters as you can see clearly the square centimeters will cancel out and we remain with 5 newtons multiplied by 24 and 5 by 24 you get 120 and therefore the force that will be applying is 120 newtons now whenever you are solving such questions you need to get the quantities given you analyze the question by writing down the quantities that are given and the quantity that is in question and always ensure that you give your answer in the SI unit unless otherwise unless for example you are told to give your answer in other units always give your answer in the SI units now during the next lesson we'll now be calculating the maximum and the minimum pressure in solids we'll now be able to calculate the minimum pressure that can be exerted and the maximum pressure that is exerted now until we meet next time your teacher purity and zelimo darasa where learning is made easy thank you Good.